Now, as you've probably seen from the title of the video, um, I want to talk about false compassion. Sorry, I don't really have an intro for this this segment of videos yet. Um, I haven't really decided how I want to have it completely formatted, but the whole topic of it is thinking, um, just thinking. Uh, but the series is more so along the lines of how to um, think out loud, think critically. Not that I am a master of thinking critically, but I think that uh, a lot of people don't know or don't um, don't intentionally try to find out how to approach things. And so I put this out as more so of me being open and honest with myself and hopefully creating dialogue and discussion along with other things of that nature. Um, and so with false compassion, I wanted to talk about it because I think it's very relevant today, especially. Uh, it seems to it seems to be a, a big part of our culture, I would say. Compassion in general, have compassion, and I don't think we actually look into the detrimental effects of false compassion. Um, so, examples of false compassion. What would what is exactly false compassion? Uh, well, now, of course, when I mention these in these instances, it's not going to be 100% every time. It's going to be more so individual case, but I'm talking generic uh, situation when I mention these. So, like, giving a homeless person money. Uh, that's generally a false compassion thing. Um, another one that's more political uh, would be allowing illegal immigration to continue willingly. Um that one can definitely be seen as a false compassion. Um, but what I want to stick to more so today is once or more like not dealing with your friend's issues. Um, and there's a reason why I st want to stick with that because it's more relatable. It's you, you can see it and you can probably think of someone in your life um, that has an issue that you, you see that's detrimental to themselves, that's hurting themselves. So to more so define false compassion, what I have written as a definition for it, or as how I've seen it, is uh, false compassion um, is, is when one takes action to avoid fixing the actual issue that is resulting in the symptoms of an, an individual is facing. So that broken down a little bit. False compassion is you know, when you take action. So in the, the first example, giving a homeless person money, the giving of money um, to avoid fixing the actual problem uh, would be the state of the homeless person themselves, whether that's a um, psychological issue they have, whether that's a financial issue, uh, more so than just straight monetary issues, um, or whether it's something else. That money doesn't fix the actual issue that had put them there in the first place. So it's that action you're doing fi without oh, to avoid fixing the actual problem um, that is resulting in the symptoms that you're fixing. The the symptoms that you'd be fixing with the homeless person situation would be their immediate situation of not having money. You fix that. Uh, that avoids fixing the actual problem. So with the whole friend situation, let's say you have a friend, right? He's uh, having a hard time finding work. He doesn't have much money at all, and he needs a place to stay. So you let him stay with you, right? And I mean, that in itself seems like a, uh, a good thing. Um, but there's not really anything uh, set in stone. There's nothing directed at you don't find the underlying issue with your friend why he was one fired from his job why he needs a place to stay why he has no money you just say hey come stay with me man i got you um and instead of finding a new job this guy he starts sleeping in longer um staying up later eating irregularly spending time and things not furthering himself in life so not things of finding a job or things of that nature finding work um, spending time in 
like video games. I hate to say video games. I should say entertainment more so. Spending more time in entertainment rather than spending time in um, fixing the issue into himself. Um, and so he starts becoming depressed because anyone in that situation is going to start facing some depression, right? And so when he's depressed, you know, the way he fights it is he starts smoking a little bit, uh, just cigarettes or something. Uh, starts having a couple drinks, nothing serious, right? But you know, it's just it's just patching on um, to the actual issue of the depression that's rooted in the the meaning that he can't find in his life because one, he doesn't have a job, he doesn't is not self sufficient. Uh, so the stage is set there, right? We have the whole situation, you know. Uh, that's the the hypothetical we're going to be working in, right? Um, you know, your friend's clearly depressed. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't the guy be? Uh, so there's a decision you have to make there, right? How do you show your friend compassion in that situation? Um, so first we can bring it into a situation of false compassion. You go to the guy, you can talk to him and be like, Hey man, I know you're going through a lot right now and it, it's got to be rough, you know, but I just want you to know I'm here for you. And, uh, I want to help you how I can. Where do you, like that's that's the end of it right there. That's that's false compassion right there. You're like, "Wait. That's false compassion?" Yeah. Yeah. You you put a band-aid on top of the underlying issue that he's facing, right? You're not helping him fix anything. Compassion as I've come to understand it is it's very in-depth it's very it, it's very time-consuming as well it takes a lot of effort from the individual giving the compassion yeah. from what I've understood it's more so investing yourself into the situation that you're not necessarily affected by but you're fully emotionally invested and physically invested into the the problem so um, You can continue to facil faci facilitate your friend's um, free bed and not give him the the need to wake up in the morning um, because he's, he's living at your place for free. Uh, so if you if he has a free place to stay and sleep, there's no force that's making him want to get up in the morning to keep his place to sleep, right? Um, and because he doesn't have that that meaning to wake up in the morning, that's where depression starts to lie and start to fester and grow. Um, he doesn't have any bills, so there's nothing forcing him to get up and go. Uh, there's no one that he owes anything to. I mean, maybe he has some debts in somewhere, but you know that's another issue. Um, so by just letting him stay at your place, you know doing nothing you're actually hurting him in the long run how much time would he have wasted just sitting there at your place doing nothing um but you know you don't want to just kick him out on the street you know uh, that could hurt him as well uh, and yeah well obviously uh, but that's where the real compassion starts to kick in and take real effect because it involves a lot more on the giver's end of things um you must become fully invested in the problem that he's facing. So with this hypothetical, um, how would one approach it, approach it with compassion? Um, I would say you'd approach it somewhat like this. You'd be like, hey man, you can stay with me, all right? I know that uh, for the next three months, I have a free place for you to stay in my, uh, or say, I, have a, I have a room open for you. Um, I'm gonna need like 300 bucks a month just to pay for the added facilities and um, services and things like electricity and water, you know. Nothing super high, but you know, 300 bucks a month. And I know there's this place, it's minimum wage, uh, but it'll just be for short term to get you on your feet, get you going again, get that, that, um, that rhythm going, you know. You know what? 
once we in, would you, and like would you want me to help you get set up on a budget I can help you get a spreadsheet we can sit it on my computer for half an hour hour and sort out where your money's gonna go and then once you get like a thousand dollars saved up um, and a better job let's go get you a place to stay at your own place you know that you'll be able to call your own and you know what I'll help you move in I'll even buy some of the furniture for you in your new place once we get there um, and you know what um, if you do some of the chores around the house here um, now I'll lower that 300 bucks a month down a little bit for you um, just so that way it makes it a little bit easier right away um, but you know tell me how you're feeling man things must be rough for you you know and then you find out how he actually how actually he's feeling and there's a lot of difference and aside from the whole lot more wordiness of that compared to the last answer um, the that answer addresses the problem that he would be going through at that time um, and also helps prevent further issues to, from developing um, and there's actually quite a bit invested on there I mean that money that you'd be taking in for rent or whatever uh, in my personal opinion some of that of course would go to like paying the extra electricity and whatever going but like and some extra food um, save up some of that as well so that when he does have that thousand dollars you can give him some more money for that furniture or whatever um, but you know that's just a hypothetical um, it's of course much more different but uh, the reason why that solution is better is one of course it was uh, addressing the actual problem for is providing solutions and it was setting up setting goals um, that were obtainable easily obtainable um, so it's a plan that your friend would see and be like hey you know like this sounds doable and you know there's a reward at the end of this that I don't necessarily deserve but I would like and I would say that would be real compassion on the givers part there false compassion is scary though man it leaves the giver with the good feeling of like I'm doing good you know that that feeling you get when you do something good um, it gives you that a little bit of that feeling uh, but it's not actually solving anything and it's actually creating a bigger problem in the end than if you would have just done it the right way the first time so that's all I really have for this this video um, Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Feel free to subscribe. I don't have anything fancy uh, graphic wise or um, anything of that sort, but I'm hoping you guys are liking these videos. Um, so yeah, tell me what you think about false compassion and compassion down below. And um, I think the, the question I'd want you to answer more so is, um, what is the biggest example of false compassion that you see in a, your daily life or societally societally either way uh that's probably gonna be it for me so i'll see y'all on the flip side my guys <laughs>